Friday we have started with this topic. This is the last topic what we have in the syllabus. If we do this one, we are done with the content. Okay. Um, for you to have a better idea about what type of questions are asked in the examination, um, you should go through the questions that are there in exam kit. So that will help you. You can, um, um, whenever you are looking into that, you can go through that. Um, see the advanced version of all that anyway you will be doing when you do a reporting part of it. So um, you can cover that. But basic knowledge about what are these topics. So we run through the we have run through the entire content in these past few days. Um, understand that some of them uh, you have learned at in, in college uh, in DJ. Some of them are new, but that is just the introduction. So if later, after a while, you will be covering that in detail. Consolidated financial statements is a, a situation where there is a parent company who acquires a controlling stake in another subsidiary. So it is mandatory that the parent company consolidates the financial statement. Even the business is carried on. Each of them, the parent company as well as the subsidiary company will prepare their financial reports and they are um, disclosed. But after that, the parent company has to um, club these two statements and then um, disclose them. Consolidated financial statements have to be disclosed. The group comprises a parent entity and the undertakings usually for other entities under its control, which are called subsidiaries. A parent has control of another entity if it holds more than. This is the criteria. So now IS 27, separate financial statements permits the parent to carry an investment in any subsidiary and or any associate at a cost as non-current asset investment. The investments, uh, investments could be investment into their business or investment in another business. So that's the category of investment. So when they have this investment in another company, but that if it is more than 50%, then in that case, this consolidation takes place. In this case, what are, what are to be consolidated? So all the financial statements that are prepared need to be consolidated. First, it is statement of uh, financial position balance sheet has to be consolidated. Profit and loss account, uh, profit and loss and other comprehensive income statement has to be consolidated. Cash flow and statement of changes in equity. Any other additional information also should be mentioned here in the notes to financial uh, statements. Okay. Um, but how to prepare these things? Talk about establish the group uh, structure. Now, how to establish the group structure, W1. It says that on the date of acquisition, if the parent company, now this is an example given, if the parent company has an investment in a subsidiary, whatever it, if it is greater than 50%, then uh, what is the percentage of investment that is made? So talk about the group structure, what portion of the investment uh, is made by the parent into the subsidiary. Second, calculate the net assets of the subsidiary. Net assets are assets minus long-term liabilities are net assets. So talk about that net assets of the subsidiary. So net assets are basically equity. Equity is equal to assets minus liability. This means equity. Okay, so share capital, share premium, any kind of a revaluation surplus, retainers, all, all that are covered under the category equity is taken here. Okay, on the acquisition date, what are they? And uh, on the reporting date. So account for that, what are the net assets, net assets of the subsidiary? That the calculate the net assets of the subsidiary. Goodwill is when they end up paying more value than the value of the investment, then the difference is called as the goodwill. So, um, in a um, see, with an intention when they want to acquire a controlling stake, so they may sometimes also have to spend more amount to convince the shareholders to sell them their shares. Um, 
there could be some kind of a um, retaliation from the subsidiary to see that such a takeover does not happen the acquisition does not happen so in this case they would also have their own defense strategies to stop them from purchasing these shares okay they they may restrict the um, supply of shares or they may um, put um, i mean put pressure on the parent company or the uh, acquirer company uh, in terms of um, maybe the debt holders um, are convinced in such a way that they their amounts have to be paid back or whatever there are so many strategies defense mechanism there are so many strategies so overcoming all these strategies also if the parent company wants to purchase so they generally end up paying more value than what is the value of the um, investment so on that note there would be goodwill that arises so how do we calculate goodwill the fair value of the consideration paid what whatever they have paid okay they might have paid uh, um, cash this is one part of it in exchange of the shares of the subsidiary they may issue their own company shares so exchange it is just not always cash which is exchanged but they may also exchange uh, the, the, the parent company shares are worth uh, um very high as compared to subsidiary maybe one is to five or one is to some some proportion in which they, they can also issue shares to the investors in exchange of the um subsidiary's shares so cash is paid shares are issued okay fair value of non controlling interest at acquisition date what does it mean by fair value of uh, nci nci is non controlling interest in um, the subsidiary at the acquisition date see if we talk about um, for example uh, if the company control if, um, intends to purchase let's say 80% 80% of the shares now they are the owners of 80% of shares that makes that the 20% of the shares are still lying with someone else some other investors they may be scattered someone who has the um, investment in the subsidiary company some other in they don't have a hold on that so non controlling interest the non controlling interest so how how will the um, the parent company look at it the on the 80% of the shares they have perfect hold on this one but what about the 20% of it so what is the fair value of those ncis at acquisition date which are lying with the um, other investors in the market now this is what is the total the um, investment value that is taken here as against the fair value of net assets at acquisition that is how did we get what is the fair value of net assets at acquisition w2 when we saw that it is consider all those assets of the subsidiary so if they are if they are uh, looking at these values which are um, taken into account the as against this what is the worth of the investment the fair value of the equity for this they are um, spending all these things okay so the fair value of the net assets at acquisition okay take deduct that and the difference is the goodwill so the total value of the shares partly which are there with them partly which are there with the other investments investors so this is the total value of the shares for this total value of the shares which they have spent and uh, when it, when we look at the uh, fair value of the net assets as on the date of acquisition if they have ended up spending more than that that will be the goodwill at acquisition the difference is goodwill at acquisition so their intention was to acquire the controlling stake so therefore they have ended up acquiring the shares at a higher price so why were they interested to get that so what is why were they interested because 
because it was the value of the reputation or the goodwill or uh, they were the, the intention could be because uh, whenever acquisitions take place that is the main intention is that growth growth is at a faster pace they need not work from scratch um so when they acquire another company then from there they can continue so it will give them better growth faster growth can enter into diversified fields diversification uh, is possible they can become mass um, leaders in the market etc multiple reasons are there behind uh, acquisitions okay so for achieving those objectives they may sometimes take decisions about investing at a higher price if they invested at a higher price the difference will become the goodwill okay that is how it is valued about what is the good bit one more important point what generally we should remember is the all acquisitions may not uh, end up being very successful sometimes see it could be the other way around also so one of the reasons why corporates fail is because there was an attempt to take over another company here um this is in general uh, if here we see that they are using their cash reserves to pay to purchase the uh, investment the shares they are issuing their shares as against acquiring the shares of the uh, subsidiary so there is so much of pressure here all their reserves are held up tied up in the acquisition but then cash is required funds are required for their operating activity to be carried on but when their funds are all tied up in the acquisition they their short term position also can get affected as soon as the short term position gets affected uh, their inability to pay the amounts and the short term short uh, in the short term their um, position gets affected reputation of their business gets affected then eventually it can end up in a corporate failure failure of the company they may also go for bankruptcy that's that's one risk which is always present with acquisitions okay. calculate the goodwill on acquisition calculate the non controlling interest so how do we calculate what is non controlling in interest is the non controlling interest one second just Okay. the non controlling interest represents the shareholders that are not part of the group example parent company owns 80% of a subsidiary so the other 20% is therefore owned by non controlling interest we also call it as minority interest because majority of the shares are with them minority of the shares are with other investors so another term for that is minority interest non controlling interest now for the purpose of consolidation you must include 100% of the subsidiary's revenue the uh, um they are having only a majority share okay but at the time of consolidation it says that for the purpose of consolidation you must include 100% of subsidiary's revenue expenses assets liabilities in the consolidated statement of comprehensive income that is the income statement should be completely consolidated the total uh, revenue total expenses profit everything should be consolidated and the statement of financial position on a line by line basis every item has to be added up together line by line in detail calculation has to happen if the parent owns less than 100% of the shares then the amount is calculated for both statement of profit and loss and statement of fin financial position as attributable to the ncis okay proportionately what is attributable to the nci also should be shown in the in these statements so there should be a separate um, item which has to be mentioned for what is the non controlling interest 
or the minority interest which lies with them. So that has to be separately accounted for and proportionately. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, would you mind explaining the parent concept once again? Which one, ma'am? Sorry. Ma'am, I've heard this term parent company a lot. So what does that mean? Parent company. Parent company is um, see when a company wants to buy a buy or acquire another business. When can an acquisition happen? An acquisition happens when they have more than fifty percent, greater than fifty percent of the shares in another company. If they acquire that, then the company because. Along with the ordinary equity shares, they also have the voting rights which they earn. Okay, so voting rights with the voting rights. Whenever um, meetings are conducted, decisions are to be taken. These shareholders can vote for the decisions. By voting for the decisions, what is that they are doing? They are managing the efforts of the company. So they they have a, um, say in the decision making. Okay, management of another company. If they have more than fifty percent of the shares purchased uh, in another company, automatically majority see they can have an influence because majority of the shares are with them. Majority of the voting rights are with them. So they the decisions would be according to how they decide. Their voting rights will um, allow them to. Participate in the uh, decisions of the of another company, so then they become the parent company. The, the criteria is when the when the number of shares in another company purchased are greater than fifty percent, anything as fifty one percent and uh, uh, and above, so that will that will make one company a parent company. What about the other company, the target company? See, there is one acquirer, acquirer trying to acquire a controlling stake. There's another company which is the target company. Okay, if they have more than fifty percent shares of the target company purchased by the acquirer company, acquirer will automatically become the parent company. Understood, ma'am. So the target company will be called the subsidiary. Then uh, each of them will be carrying on with their businesses. The financial statements are prepared; they are disclosed. But apart from that, the parent company ha it is mandatory for the parent company to consolidate the financial statements, club together. Both of them have to be club together, added together, and the consolidated financial statements have to be prepared and disclosed. How to prepare the consolidated financial statement? Because there are many items in the financial statements. So item by item, line by line, the consolidation should happen. See, if it was, it's it's not that it is hundred percent of it is which is acquired that simply be added, but in between there is another concept called as someone else is also the investor in the target company. It is not that only the acquirer has acquirer did not acquire all hundred percent shares. Acquirer has only uh, gained or a controlling stake or a controlling interest um, that is greater than fifty percent. What about the other minority investment which is there? That also has to be considered. So when when the consolidated financial statements are prepared, so these are the steps what we are talking about. Talk about what's the group structure? What is the percentage of the shares they have in the other company? Calculate what are the what's the equity value of the subsidiary? Then goodwill. Goodwill is if they end up paying more value. Let's say that each share is worth ten. Very basic example. Each share is worth ten rupees in the market. But because um, see, it is not that just because there is a company which comes forward to buy that investors will be willing to pay. Willing, willing to sell them uh, their shares, and the company pays for that, and then gets that. It's not that simple. See, the target company also will have knowledge that yes, there is some company which wants to purchase uh, their shares, and then get that controlling stake. Therefore, they they take up certain defensive strategies. 
in this process what happens is the, it becomes very difficult for the acquirer to purchase the shares so they may end up purchasing the shares at a higher value than the fair market value so when they purchase it at a higher value than the fair market value the difference is acquisition uh, goodwill on acquisition goodwill this is the calculation wise see if they have spent cash reserves if they have issued new shares of their company in exchange of the um, subsidiary uh, shares the total uh, value of the equity is if this is what they have acquired this is what is lies with others this is the total value of the equity of the subsidiary now for this value of the subsidiary okay whatever they have ended up spending so the, this is what they have spent and this is what is the value of the shares as at the time of um, acquisition when these two things are compared if they have spent more value then the difference is good bit that is how goodwill is calculated Ma'am, could you please show the previous slide once more? Ah, yes, this one. Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, what's that on NCI? Ah, non-controlling interest. Non-controlling interest. The example is, if suppose a company acquires eighty percent of the shares, so they will have eighty percent of the shares with them, which means that twenty percent of the shares are with some other investors. See. these are these these uh, shares are with others on the on those shares they do not have a control if they are investors they are the shareholders of the subsidiary company they have a hold on their share of 80% they do not have a hold on this 20% non controlling interest minority interest that's another term which is used the non controlling interest represents the shareholders that are not part of the group the parent company has only 80% so to that extent they have the voting rights they have the power okay, they can control that but what about these 20% since they have not purchased all 100% shares at least one one small part minority part is still with others okay so that also is the total equity issued by the subsidiary so out of the total equity issued by the subsidiary majority lies with the parent company minority is still in the hands of other investors that is non controlling interest parent does not have any hold on that so when the um, when the financial statements are consolidated balance sheet is balance sheet is uh, item by item they are added they have their 100% equity parent company's own 100% equity and the subsidiary's equity they have only 80% of it so their 100% and 80% of the subsidiary they will consolidate what about this one 20% now 20% will be shown in the consolidated balance sheet as non controlling interest they are have not they have not invested in that so it is still with others so they will be as part of the liability side but it is not their own equity you know it is somebody else 
So they have contributed the capital. It would be appearing as a separate item on the liability side called as non-controlling interest. So ma'am, this non-controlling interest will be shown in the parent company's consolidated balance sheet as non-controlling interest. That's right. That's right. Or the, another term is minority interest. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, once can you go to the, go back to the previous slide? Ma'am, in this slide, uh, FA of shares issued by the parent is added. Yes. Um, uh, shares issued to the parent or shares issued by the no. parent? This one, second item? Yes, ma'am. Okay. See, um, uh, in the process of purchasing shares of the subsidiary, let's say that... Um, um, they want to purchase uh, 10 shares of the subsidiary. They may issue one share of their company. Their company might have, might have been well placed in the um, market. Their shares are worth something. So sometimes to acquire the share, buy the shares of a well-to-do company, investors of the subsidiary may get convinced to exchange their shares. So. These are, this is the cash reserve which they are using to acquire the shares of the subsidiary. They may also issue new shares of their company and use these shares in exchange of purchase of the subsidiary shares. Okay, ma'am, understood. So ma'am, just in case I don't have any further con uh, confusion, the, yes. We pay certain consideration for purchasing the subsidiary company's shares or the targeted company's shares. The parent company pays. Yes. So that amount plus if any shares we issued mm -hmm. plus uh, the NCI component or mm -hmm. minority interest mm -hmm. plus the net assets we acquire gives us the good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Huh. See, this, this may be worth very less in the market. See, they are using all their uh, resources. These are these are the resources which they are using. But the real market price of the subsidiary may be less than that. If it is less than that, then there is a good deal. Otherwise, if it is equal, if they are acquiring at the fair market value, there may there will not be any goodwill. Goodwill is because they are spending more than what it is worth. That's why there is a good deal. Um, if it's less than, like if the net assets no, are no, more. No. Uh, that 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 would not happen. No? Uh, see, if here there is a um, there is a demand that is there. But there is a demand from the parent. The acquirer wants to purchase it. So why would anyone just surrender their uh, investment like that? That that would not happen. No? At least at the fair market value, it would be. Why would any investor sell it at a value less than the fair market value? That would have. That would not happen. No? So usually we we do not we don't have the concept of selling equity at a discount value. So it would be at the market value only, at least at the market value. Market value or higher than the market value. Demand oh. is their price automatically rises. That's the concept of the stock market. No? So because, because now there is a demand created by the acquirer company, so the price automatically goes up. So they may... Um, end up spending more than uh, what it is worth. So that's why goodwill would be there. Mom, if there is no additional value, means there is no goodwill. No, uh, no additional value, that is no goodwill. Okay, ma'am. Okay, so um, how do we account for non controlling interest? Non controlling interest in the statement of financial position in the balance sheet. So fair value of NCI at acquisition. So as on the date of acquisition, whatever is the fair, fair value of NCI, that would appear as a separate item in the balance sheet. It is not equity. See, it is not that they have raised the liability from them. They are in, they have invested in the subsidiary company, in the target company. Okay, so that is also part of the liability of the subsidiary. Okay, so the subsidiary has a liability. See, it is a liability to the owners. They are the shareholders, they are investors. Now, as part of the consolidated financial statement, it is not equity because it is not, they have not invested in that. Someone else has invested. 
they have not raised the liability so it will appear as a separate item in the balance sheet as non controlling interest the fair fair value of non controlling interest at acquisition non controlling interest share of post acquisition reserves okay so it would be appearing any kind of a reserve which is used um, uh, net assets of the subsidiary we see that any kind of a uh, fair value adjustment any kind of adjustments that are that take place about uh, devaluation etc so any such kind of a reserve if it is there that would also be part of the uh, non controlling interest because anything proportionately should go to the uh, they are also owners owners of the subsidiary company they have invested in the share capital of the subsidiary company any kind of a reserve which is their undistributed uh, profits are reserves which are set aside so proportionate share of the reserves which should be added to the value of the nci that would be done and it would be accounted so the heading would be non controlling interest in the balance sheet the fair value as at the date of acquisition plus any undistributed profits proportionally uh, which has which which should be um, added to the uh, fair value of nci will be added and it will be shown this is a separate item in the balance, consolidated financial statement uh, balance sheet then the next item would be uh, group retained earnings the, um, as part of that we see that first one is group structure capital structure what portion of the investment uh, find out the equity of the subsidiary goodwill on acquisition non controlling interest finally calculate the group retained earnings that's the last part uh, group retained earnings so there would be retained earnings of the uh, see in order to calculate group retained earnings you cannot add together the retained earnings of the parent and the subsidiary some of the retained earnings of the subsidiary may have been earned before it was acquired by the parent they are referred to as pre acquisition reserves so pre acquisition reserves should proportionately see they only all those reserves do not belong to them so there are specific purpose for which the reserve is set aside see only on or in case of um, winding up of the company anything which is remaining after distributing after settling all those things then only it will belong to them but because it is already set aside a reserve is already set aside the purpose may be specific the purpose may not be specific and these are retained earnings that will have been earned before it was acquired by the parent then they would be appearing as referred to as pre acquisition reserves therefore a working is required to calculate retained earnings attributable proportionately how much would it come to them from the date of control from the date the control was acquired okay. but otherwise they see this this will not uh, this portion of the retained earnings which are set aside immediately it will not belong to them so this will be separately recorded as uh, pre acquisition reserves anything which is um, unutilized or the purpose is not met and available proportionately would come to them and it would become the part of equity so okay that is uh, it is not just add all the group um, add all the retained earnings like we add asset if it is land there land here both of them will be added together and the total land value in the balance sheet likewise every item would be added so but retained earnings cannot be added just like that because if there is any undistributed profit or any reserve that is set aside that reserve if it is earned before the acquisition date okay so that will appear separately but out of that also if anything should be attributed it would be proportionately added attributable to the parent company from the date control was acquired so in uh, in case of retained earnings it's not just completely 100% adding but it is 100% of their own retained earnings plus 
only the proportionate part of the um, retained earnings from of the subsidiary will be taken and added and that will be group retained earnings the balance of it will appear as a reserve separate item as a reserve in the balance sheet I'm pretty sure the previous slide one. Then <clears throat> now accounting for reserves, pre and post acquisition reserves. Reserves are undistributed profits that are or profits that are set aside. These are reserves that exist in a subsidiary entity at the date that it is acquired. So all of them do not belong to them. These reserves are capitalized and included in the goodwill calculation. Profits earned by the subsidiary after the date of acquisition are called post-acquisition reserves. These are included in the group retained earnings calculation. Before that one, before uh, the date of acquisition, since they do not belong to the parent, so it is not added, it would be set aside. Okay, they are capitalized. These reserves are capitalized. Separately, it is shown in the balance sheet. But the ones which are set aside, they belong to that. See, when there are undistributed profits or reserves which are there, reserves will, um, will ultimately result in the growth, growth of the company because that would be used for some reinvestment purpose or something. At the moment, they are not distributed as dividend, but they belong to the equity holders. So because they belong to the equity holders, it will result in a capital gain in the future. It is as of now, it is not distributed, so they do not get a return in the form of dividend. But this reinvestment if we are to calculate growth, whatever is reinvested in the company or un, um, undistributed reserves, retained earnings will be reinvested and uh, there would be additional returns that will be earned on that. The returns would be at the rate of R, rate of return percentage. So automatically there would be growth. So because of reserves which are there in the balance sheet, this would reflect in the market price. So the investors also understand that they do not get the dividends immediately, but this, this can increase the share price in the stock market. So that, that, is, that, that is a capital gain for them. So the difference in the price, the price gets adjusted because of that. So the investors also would be uh, looking at the financial statements, what is happening. To what extent are the reserves available? Because reserves are undistributed profits. Eventually, they would be, they would be paid to them. If not now, sometime later, at least they would be paid to them. And the, there is a purpose with which uh, for which these are retained. So the purpose, if it is met, it can result in additional profits for them. So on account of that, see, this is a fundamental analysis which is taken up. On account of that, the prices in the stock market for the shares automatically increase. Okay, so it will result in an uh, increased value of the share price. Okay, so they are capitalized, they are shown separately. So this will be reflecting. So when this amount is there, at the moment they are not distributed, but future they would be paid with this amount. Therefore, uh, that can be seen in the share price. 
if it is earned before the before the uh, acquisition pre acquisition they would be appearing in this okay because of that the prices have increased okay that will result in goodwill okay whatever is the um, fair market value more than that they are paying isn't it we when we have looked into the calculation of the goodwill more than the fair market value they uh, they have spent that why because there are uh, reserves also available they are reserves available eventually that will belong to them so the company is also willing to pay higher value than what is the fair market value therefore it will um, reflect in that part of goodwill calculation the pre acquisition post acquisition anyway that belongs to them because they were a part of the um, that particular year when the profits were earned all profits belong to all of them all the shareholders so earnings per share is calculated so how much earnings are available per share so post acquisition anything which is set aside these are included in the group retained earnings calculation because it is it belongs to them So what are fair values? The IRFS three uh, business combination requires that if the fair values of the subsidiary's net assets, net assets are equity, at the date of acquisition is different from their carrying amount, the book amount should be adjusted to the fair value on consolidation. See, uh, in the books of accounts, they would be uh, accounted at the issue price. Any kind of a premium that is collected. those things would be accounted but as on the date of acquisition definitely we would see that the uh, prices would rise and so they are uh, they are to adjust according to the fair value so they are supposed to adjust it if the fair value of the equity at the date of acquisition is different from their carrying amount carrying amount is the book value the book amount should be adjusted to the fair value on consolidation the fair value is the amount of the asset could be exchanged or sold for in the arms length transaction so immediately in the market at what price these things can be exchanged which can be sold that's the fair market value so on consolidation at that time instead of recording the original cost they would be recording the transactions at the fair market value <clears throat> intra group balances intra group balances occur occur when the parent the parent and the subsidiary trade with each other so parent would be um, purchasing or selling their shares to the subsidiary subsidiary in turn will be doing that so that is an intra group um, exchange of transactions so intra group balances occur when the parent and subsidiary trade with each other or they are intra group loans between the two companies if this is the case adjust the face to the uh, face of the sofp to remove the remove both the loan assets and the loan liabilities so if there is any kind of such kind of transaction happening between these two parent and the subsidiary okay so what has to be done remove both the loan asset as well as the loan see if they have given a loan to suppose parent has given a loan to subsidiary subsidiary will have it as a liability parent will have it as an asset on consolidation one item will be asset one item will be liability on consolidation so remove that amount as if the current account balances disagree it is most likely to be due to cash in transit or goods in transit so what about provisions for unrealized profits so, <clears throat> provision for unrealized profits the parent or subsidiary may sell goods to each other resulting in a profit being as recorded and in not the provisions for unrealized profits are made because unknown to the concept of students we are not supposed uh -huh. to 
we do not uh, but uh, even before the uh, goods or services are uh, delivered revenue can be received in advance we call that as unearned revenue so what about that unearned revenue okay so they they would appear as a liability it is a revenue but because the liability to provide these services or goods is still there it would appear as unearned revenue in the uh, balance sheet on the liability side if the parent or subsidiary may sell goods to each other resulting in a profit being as recorded in the selling entity's financial statement so so there is still a liability but they have ac accounted for the transaction that uh, revenue was earned and uh, as part of the revenue the, there's a profit component of that revenue because it is between these two parent and subsidiary now in that case what has to be done if these goods are still held by the purchasing entity at the year end the goods have not been sold outside the group then the profit is therefore unrealized accounting wise because the payment is made revenue is generated but there is still a liability on hold because the goods were not yet um, delivered so the profit is therefore unrealized and from the group's perspective should be removed okay it should be removed it should be treated as a liability it cannot be part of the revenue generated because there is still a liability there to deliver the goods any such thing is there okay it should be removed from the consolidated financial statement unearned revenue so it is not revenue it is unearned revenue so do not include it in the revenue of the um, statement of profit and loss but bring that to statement of financial position and record it as a liability unearned revenue but now that because the transaction was not complete it did not ha happen that should be removed they cannot account it there so an adjustment is also required to ensure that inventory is stated at the cost to the inventory is always valued at the cost price so that adjustment also um, because uh, the sale did not take place so uh, the sale value is adjusted then it would become the closing stock closing stock is always valued at the cost price so there is no profit component that can be added to the inventory that adjustment should be taken now because it is between these two entities there is always a possibility that they can inflate the financial uh, statements by showing that there is a revenue generated but if the if the transaction was not complete uh, they are not supposed to include any such thing See, by inflating the uh, income statement the revenue is shown as a higher value profit automatically will be accounted at a higher value um that will reflect a different picture of the um of the company these two companies because it is mutual between them they can end up showing that which is not uh, the right thing to be done therefore it if it if the transaction was not completed do not provide for any unrealized profits if the transaction was not said to be realized therefore please do not record anything like that and remove if at all if anything was there otherwise it would be shown as an un unearned revenue but now not even as an unearned revenue do not show that it will be only inventory ending inventory and that ending inventory also will be at the cost value then we see the consolidated statement of profit or loss the consolidated statement of profit or loss is uh, prepared by adding together the parent and subsidiary income and expenses line by line from revenue as far as profit up, um, as far as profit from tax this will give us the profit after tax generated from the resources under the group's control so add all the items of the um, income statement line by line add them this will give us the profit after tax generated which is under their groups control because proportionately the profit will be uh, charged if there is some portion of the profit also 
which has to be um, charged to the non controlling interest no so they also have a share in the profits if the parent company owns less than 100% see then the shares uh, an amount is calculated for both statement of profit and loss account and the statement of financial position as attributable so one portion of the profit belongs to them they are also the owners so whatever is to be charged to them that would be separate and whatever is can be charged to them or whatever is attributable to them that only would be shown there the resources under the group's control the parents and the non controlling interest share of the profit after tax is shown in a note beneath the statement of profit or loss if there is a mid year acquisition account only for the post acquisition income and expenses of the subsidiary how many exemptions do you have acca total of 6 ma'am So you will write from F seven. Is that so? No, no, ma'am. Like, uh, we are we are from B com and B B A, right? Mm -hmm. So B B A have different set of exemptions, and B com has different set of exemptions. But both are not uh, sequential; they are very random. Okay, okay, okay. So, like the subjects that our curriculum doesn't cover, we have to those exams. Okay, okay. It's VR, it's VL, uh, and then the uh, advanced papers. So out of that, whatever you choose, those so that would be four papers. Apart from those four papers, you will have to choose an. Uh, you you have another three of them included. So altogether, seven has to be written, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. That's right. F nine will be there anyway. Four. The F nine will be five. F four. So, ma'am, is there any issue if we write only nine papers and don't go for the tenth? I didn't get you nine. Uh, I am really sorry. I didn't get you. So it's like if we write nine papers, we get a degree or a certificate. After that, tenth one we get another one, eleventh mm -hmm. another. So if we complete only nine papers, mm -hmm. and I don't think we'll see. Uh, I mean, um. Uh, Partially qualified and fully qualified. Definitely, there is a difference in that. That is what is uh, that would be the impact. What we can see. So fully qualified. Actually, yeah. This course only gives us training for the nine papers, not for the tenth one. From tenth onwards, we are on our own. By then, you will understand. I think if 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 it is not available from. Um, the college side or the organization side i think you can also have help taken from other sources outside that the market has so many facilities available self study mode also by then you will understand about what is this what is the pattern of these exams and all i think you can manage it on your own also by then it is about how well you understand the exam pattern because it's all case study pattern of exams initially some of the papers um, you see both of them included that is the objective type questions as well as the case study pattern questions but uh, when you move to the advanced papers uh, professional level papers then you see that uh, there are only case study type of uh, questions that are asked so you understand how to answer them so after that i think uh, if you learn the content wise you, you should be able to manage but otherwise also there are uh, resources available outside you can say all this should aim at um, updating your skills and knowledge and qualification that is what is required in this uh, present world the more um, skills one has is valued to to that extent no? so it is a continuous process of enhancing one's knowledge and skills so 
don't have that mindset that this would be sufficient no it is never sufficient you know that the how the world is changing because of attribute um, see we um, we can uh, talk about that because of technology because of whatever is the reason See, out of the, um, see, there are principles of um, see, uh, ethical principles and all when we talk about one principle talks about competence and due care. So one has to be competent to be there in that corporate world. As part of that, you it is an expectation that the, uh, the employees are to um, become competent. See, one, one where the days when uh, see, somebody joins a, job and then we also hear that they retire in that same capacity um they work for 20 30 years they are doing day in and day out the same thing but that is not accepted one becomes outdated if they do not enhance their skills so qualification also is a need and now is the time when you have time and energy once you join job it becomes very difficult to, to take time to study I think it should go in the flow and then finish it off and then pass through all the papers. It's do not even uh, think about ending here. Beyond that, also you should be thinking about see, this is professional. Um, uh, I mean qualification. Now there is the future is all about analytics. The future is all about technology. So acquire something more to do with technology related uh, certifications and all. So that should be there. I mean, you should think about acquiring those things as well. So please do that. Partially and fully qualified. That's the only difference what we can talk about it. I do not know the terms and conditions. I'm just a faculty. So what is what training is provided to you and all? I, I cannot comment about that because I have no knowledge about that. I'm just a faculty here. One second. Okay, to continue with um, okay, intra group items, intra group trading, intra group interest. See, any sale from the parent to the subsidiary and vice versa needs to be cancelled out as follows. Because in one place it would be revenue, in another place it is cost of goods sold. No? So cancel it off. Then any kind of intra-group interest, any intra-group interest must be eliminated from interest receivable and interest payable. The intra-group trade and unrealized profits. When dealing with intra-group trade, the whole amount is deducted from both sales and purchases. So it is to be removed, the transaction is to be removed. However, if some of this inventory remains unsold at the year end, an adjustment needs to be made for the unrealized profit. <clears throat> the, if some of the inventory remains unsold, closing stock at the end of the year, an adjustment needs to be made for the unrealized profit. The unrealized profit, what is that? Uh, um, which is to be done completely deduct that from the total sales, total purchases. So it would be now um, not shown because the sale in one place it is sale, one place it is cost of sales. So do not account for that. But if the sale has not taken place and there is closing stock, closing stock will be taken only at the cost price. So at the year end, an adjustment needs to be made for the unrealized profit so um, 
there is no profit realized because there is stock which is still there um on that note it would be adjusted at the cost value as we have looked into in the uh, previous um, we have seen in the previous slides also so closing stock will be valued at the original cost not at the um, fair market value or not at a value added uh, after a markup is added no not at that but at the original cost cost value the provision for unrealized profit is calculated in the same way for both statement of profit and loss and the uh, statement of financial position the effect of profit or loss for the period is that the cost of sales will increase with the reduction in value of the closing investment okay okay now let's see about if there are investments in associates and joint ventures see what is a joint venture um when um, two or more business entities come together they um, they start another business so they start another venture to carry on with the business <clears throat> an associate is an entity over which the investor exerts significant influence so if they have an investment into that an entity over which the investor has exerts a significant influence when do we call that significant influence is the greater than 50% they are, that company automatically becomes the parent but anything less than 50% also should be looked into so if, if the investment is between 20% to 50% it says it usually indicates significant influence so an associate is an entity over which the investor exerts significantly if they have uh, an investment of 20% to 50% in between that then it would be called as an associate investment in associates and joint ventures an associate is neither a parent nor a subsidiary it is not part of the group instead the group has an investment in the associate so they have an investment made in the total they are now not the parent company because they do not they have not invested more than 50% less than 50% it cannot be also ignored because it is greater than 20% if it is less than 20% it is a very minority portion it would not be um, it doesn't have a significant influence because influence is in terms of voting rights what they have and with, with the use of voting rights they can have an influence on the other company that is what we are basically talking about here they have a significant influence of course it's not a controlling stake but they still have a significant influence if it is if the investment is anywhere between 20% to 50% in the consolidated accounts we use a technique called as equity accounting see this is all not learned anywhere in the whole course about uh, see we would not be learning that equity accounting um, we use a technique called as equity accounting to account for an associate only include the group share of the associates net assets in the consolidated uh, statement of financial position as a one line entry under the category called as non current assets the non current assets there are tangible assets intangible assets and the investment in other companies so that would appear in the statement of financial position it it is an investment as a non current assets in the consolidated uh, statement of profit and loss account include only the group share of the associates profit after this, attributable profit for the year in arriving at the consolidated profit before tax group accounts of so um, associates the consolidated statement of financial position investment in associate with non current assets 
this is the group share of the associates not net assets at the state uh, at the statement of financial position date any kind of reserves that are there include the parent share of the associates post acquisition reserves calculated in the same way as per the subsidiary see here they have a, they do not have a controlling stake so the concept of uh, preparing consolidated statements consolidated statements are to be prepared when um, they have a controlling stake but sometimes it is also required by the um, by those companies who have a significant influence so they also have to show this uh, this proportionate investment and that consolidation part of it the investment in associate with non current assets so what is their percentage of investment it is only between 20% to 50% yet sometimes it is because they have a significant influence so on that note they have to show the investment in the other company now that is not a subsidiary they are not the parent but yet whatever is their investment and proportionately what portion of the profits belong to them etc those details have to be clearly shown in statement of financial position and the statement of profit and loss column account for group share of profit after tax of associate as a one line entry in arriving at the group profit before tax do not add in the associates revenue or expenses line by line because this is not a subsidiary just show only their portion of profit that belongs to them or the portion of the investment which they have made in the uh, associate but need not be done line by line line by line has to be done in case of a parent and subsidiary but because now the relationship is not parent and subsidiary but only that portion which belongs to them those details only need to be shown so other items about the associate need not be brought into their financial state okay that's the syllabus which is covered in fa um so as we have run through the financial statements right from the beginning every aspect uh, of the financial accounting financial statements multiple things are covered um so this is a basic uh, training that is provided covering the entire um, syllabus in fa um because you are not preparing for the examination so the focus was not to take you through the examination kit and within 20 hours training so it is not possible that the questions from the examination kit are also covered of course we've done it at a very fast pace okay you were also um, able to follow therefore i also follow i also took you at a very fast pace only we've done the content so we have on hand one more day tomorrow's day so for tomorrow's day we can think about solving um, few questions any specific topic you want me to cover the questions um, any specific topic which you think uh, we should be solving question we'll take the question from the exam kit and then solve the questions in the class anything
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So we are not going to do anything else today. Ah, uh, we'll do. Uh, uh, we'll do cash flow statement questions. So I'm just uh, taking you through the um, topics what we have done. Tomorrow we will focus on whatever topic you tell. Now I will do questions from statement of cash. That is all the content what we have done. Covered. So we still have another half an hour time. So let's take up questions from uh, cash flow statement. Or from I'll put the questions on the screen. Okay. So, statement of cash flows. Let's solve the questions from the examination kit. Uh, from statement of cash, uh, statement of cash flow. Extracts from the financial statements of Dues Company with a reporting date on thirty first December discloses the following balances. So. 20x9 and 20x8 equity shares at the one dollar is 300,000, 120,000 share premium is given. On Jan 1st January 20x9, a bonus issue of one share for every 12 held at 31st December 20x8 was made and loan notes of 300,000 were issued at par. Interest of 12,000 was paid during the year. We, uh, we have to find out what is the net cash inflow from financing activities. So financing activities would be um, any inflow that they have received on account of difference in the equity. Okay, that will be there. Outflow will be if there was anything which is paid, um, which was paid as part of um, these uh, investment amounts raised fine only the cash transaction should be there what is the difference in the equity shares we see that Yeah, then uh, share premium. One six. One lakh six. One six. Okay, one lakh sixty. On first January two zero one nine, a bonus share of uh, one one share for every twelve held at uh, so proportionally few shares were issued to the existing shareholders in place of distributing the dividend. One share for every twelve. Proportionately, these shares were issued. Fine. Was there any cash? Will there be any cash received collected on uh, bonus shares? It is an exchange. Exchange between instead of paying cash dividend, they are issuing them new shares. That is all. What is there with bonus shares? There is. This is not resulting in any kind of a cash outflow. Okay, there is no cash flow on account of issue of bonus shares. They are not um, paying any cash dividend. They are not collecting anything as against the issue of shares. Fine. Now, in that case, we do not account for this thing at all. After that, um, and was made and loan notes of 300,000 were issued at par. 
interest of 12,000 was paid during the year. One eighty. One is one eighty. Another one is one sixty. Another one is three hundred. This one. These are all cash inflows. Bonus share is will not result in any kind of a cash flow. So then. Now there is one item given here called as interest of twelve thousand was paid during the year. The interest, if it was paid as twelve thousand, interest is not part of the state um, the section of uh, cash flows from financing activity. Interest paid is a part of the operating activities. The other than the interest that is paid on the loans or debt capital uh, raised. Certain other uh, interest as part of the operating activities also would be paid. So this interest would be clubbed with that interest. So interest. This is very important point. What we have to remember that interest paid is never taken as part of financing activity. It goes to the uh, section of operate cash flows from operating activities. Okay. Don't get confused. That dividend paid will come if if dividend. But here they did not pay dividend; they just issued bonus shares. So no, nothing was paid as dividend. Nothing was collected on issue of new shares. Add them up: one eighty, one two three five six six forty. Okay. So the total cash flows from financing activity, all of them are inflows. No, nothing is outflow. So the total is six forty. Three forty one says that Nobus Company is producing a statement of cash flows from the year ended thirty first December two zero x five. The accountant has identified the following balance in the financial statement: interest accrual brought forward, interest accrual carried forward, interest payable, interest received, proceeds of share issue, loan repaid, dividend statement of uh, changes in equity. What is the net cash flow from investing activities? Investing activities when they invest in uh, their own business, that is purchase of assets, or invest in in another company. Um, they have received, they have received cash amount of thirteen thousand. These are. Interest accrued, which is brought forward from the previous period, and interest accrued at the end of the period carried forward to the next period. Whatever is the account, as against that, if if we are talking about interest that is accrued, if we talk about it, there is four thousand nine hundred that is due in the last period brought forward to this period, and one thousand two hundred is accrued to be. Um, Carried over to the next period. Okay, as against this, they are receiving a cash amount of thirteen thousand. That is, these are all dues. This is what is um, um, the amount that is received. If we write it here, the amount that is received as against whatever is due, the balance of it becomes the new uh, interest receivable. Fine. All that we are not getting into the intricacies. As of now, how much is the cash flow resulting in a, on account of interest? So interest received is thirteen thousand. This is payable. It is still um, not um, settled in the form of uh, cash. It is due. So what is there is thirteen thousand. Proceeds of share issue. Who is issuing? The company is issuing pro, uh, shares. So this becomes part of the financing activity, not investing activity. Loan that was raised was repaid is also financing activity. 
dividends that are distributed also will, will be a financing activity the question is about what are what's the cash flow on account of investing activity it is only 13000 13000 is an inflow not an outflow because they received it Which of the following items could appear as items as an, in an entity's statement of cash flows? Statement of cash flows. So which one would appear? Bonus shares, issue of bonus shares, issue of right shares. Will they appear? Devaluation of non-current assets. Will it appear? Dividends paid. Will it appear? Which one will appear? Or anything? Only one specific thing appears. What's the answer? Bonus share will not appear just now, it's ruled out because uh, as against cash dividend, uh, instead of cash dividend, instead of paying cash dividend, they issued new shares and allotted to the existing shareholders. A rights issue is new issue of shares would be there. They are allotted, they are sold to the existing shareholders at a price less than the market value, current market value. So they collect money from, they collect cash from the existing shareholders they, there is a new issue but they that is not available to the in all investors in the stock market it is only allotted to the existing shareholders but as against that cash is collected so two will be a cash transaction it will appear in the statement of cash flow revaluation is a book adjustment we know that the books book value of the uh, assets are adjusted according to the fair market value if there is an appreciation it will be adjusted according to that dividend paid is anyway a cash transaction so what's the op option c is the right answer a draft statement of uh, cash flows contain the following We have profit before tax, depreciation, incre increase in inventories, decrease in receivables, increase in payables, net cash flow from operating activities 21. Which two of the following corrections need to be made to the calculations? If you recollect the um, statement of operating, sorry, cash, uh, in the statement of cash flow, the section called as cash flows from operating activities, indirect method. The starting point is uh, the profit, the profit that is earned um, in the income statement. So they are starting with the point of profit before tax. Any kind of a non-cash, non-operating expenses are added back. Non-operating incomes are deducted. So. In that case, we see that depreciation here, it is added back and these three items are deducted. So, is this correct depreciation being added back is a correct thing. So, there is nothing wrong with that. That is the right treatment of uh, depreciation because it, <coughs> because it is a non-cash transaction. It should be added back. Next comes... On the if, third and fourth one. So if uh, if there is a decrease in uh, current assets, decrease in current assets should be added. So this should be added. Increase in current assets should be deducted. Increase in payables should be added. So as you said, um, this these things should be. So these are the corrections. To be done. Okay, right. Where in an entity's financial statements complying with the IFRS standards, should you find the proceeds of non-current assets sold during the 
period. Statement of cash flow and statement of financial position. Statement of what is sold. Proceeds of non-current assets sold during the period. Okay. Statement of changes in equity. Um, see. Statement of profit and loss. The cut and other components of income and uh, cash flow statement. Statement of uh, cash flow only. Um, um, see if the assets are non-current assets, if these assets are sold, uh, the sale value, the proceeds, the total value will not appear in the uh, C. Uh, if we uh, if we say that here we don't have this one. Any loss or gain on account of sale of non-current assets, only that portion comes here. We don't have the total sale value because it is not revenue. No? So it will be accounted in the respective ledger account. If there is an asset account, the treatment would be the opening balance would be there, the closing balance. Sale will be charged to the asset account. Here it comes. The entry will be, if this is asset account, the journal entry will be, it will be charged to the asset account and cash, respective non-current asset and this is cash. On sale, if there is a gain or loss, only that portion will come to statement of profit and loss account. Okay, so it gets adjusted, adjusted in the respective ledger accounts only. It will not come to statement of profit and loss account as a revenue because it is not from operating activities. So we are left with only the answer of um, statement of cash flows only. Here in the ledger account itself. Uh, so these things, the this will not come as a revenue to the trial balance in the first place. That we can write it somewhere. Um, yes. When an asset is sold, if there is any gain on sale or any loss on sale, mm -hmm. don't we transfer it to P and L? That's what I'm saying. I'm 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 I mentioned that. See, only the portion of gain or loss will come. But here it says that uh, if an entity, uh, should you find the proceeds, proceeds means the sale value. This term proceeds is the sale cash value, which is realized on sale. So total value does not come to statement of profit and loss. Account. Only the gain part or this loss part will come. The total sale value cash, which is received, will go to cash, statement of cash. Then we see there is a um, the following amounts have been prepared for the inclusion in the statement of cash flows of bamboo. Uh, how much is the cash generated from operations? So we have tax and dividends paid, increase in payables, decrease in inventory, redemption of loans, um, increase in receivables, reduction in cash and cash equivalents, depreciation charge. Uh, payments to acquire non-current assets, proceeds from sale of non-current assets. Do we see any amount of uh, profit, tax, uh, um, and dividends paid, increase in payables, decrease in inventory, redemption of loans, increase in receivables? We don't have net profit. Um, see any of the items we we do not um, see the net profits. Net profit is a question mark here.
we have tax and dividends paid increase in payables um increase in payables is a deduction decrease in inventory is an addition loss or redemption of loans is a um it's a financing activity redemption of loans increase in receivables will be deducted reduction in cash and cash equivalents is the last section fourth section that is the, a separate section then depreciation should be added back okay um payment to acquire non current assets is a uh, investing activity proceeds from sale of non current assets is investing activity okay what we can do is we have um, one financing activity one investing activity or two investing activity see um, cash flows from operating activity so we see that operating activity is one thing then we have investing activity then we have um, financing activity. when these three activities are accounted for the resultant figure is the um, change in the cash and cash equivalents let's quickly uh, look at the format what we have it in the ppt so it gives us an idea about what is that fourth section what we talk about here in this case the summary of that it talks about see there are three different cash flows see the total of all these three different cash flows will talk about whether there is an increase in uh, increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalent so this is given to us we have these two uh, uh, items we do not have the total of cash flows from operating activities so this will become the missing figure this is there we have the reduction in cash and cash equivalents is there one one item of one or two items of financing activity uh, items of investing activity are there so we work it backwards to arrive at what is cash flows from operating activities once we are know that thing then taking that the other active or uh, the other transactions of the so the other transactions of uh, the um, operating activity section can be adjusted and arrive at arrive at what is the cash generated from operation so reduction in cash and cash equivalents is 3211 minus 3211 we have operating activities missing figure financing activity sorry first next is investing activity under investing activity we see um, there is minus 47999 then we have plus proceeds no plus 13100 then we also have financing activity financing activity the amount is ha huh, reduction of loans is 300 so that will become minus 300 
then we see um, We also have the first item, just check this one. Tax and dividends paid is um, 87,566. So we should be able to find out what's the missing figure here because the decrease in cash and cash equivalents is minus 3211. Please tell me how much is the answer. Then after that, we can um, substitute that part. Tax paid is part of uh, operating activity. Dividend paid is part of the financing activity. So that's a confusion there. Because so this is part of the operating activity, this is part of the financing activity. Whenever we have two items which are contradicting, um, I mean, um, which are uh, to be appearing in two different places, the importance will be given to what item is given first. Importance is tax is given first. Because tax is part of the operating activity, we would take that in the operating. But otherwise, by nature, where would these things appear is tax will appear in operating activities section, dividend will appear in financing activity section. Both of them are clubbed together. Maybe this is this portion is not so very significant. So tax, because it goes to operating activity, we would take this 87,566 also in operating activity. So this part of it, tell me how much is operating activities. there this will come to this side plus the, these this will become minus this will become plus so how much is cash flow generated from operations uh, cash flows from operating activities after that we will fit into that <clears throat> Shall we continue this question tomorrow? It's time. Uh, shall we continue this question tomorrow? I hope this logic is clear. Please make a note of it. And once we find no, out. The logic is clear. But then the answer I'm getting is not one of these options. No, 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 no. See, that is not the final answer. Uh, that, is, uh, that is the entire thing of cash flows from operating activity. Then we keep it. See, um, what is cash flow generated from operations is that portion of um, revenue minus expenses paid will become and minus tax dividend paid will become cash flows generated so we still have to do some adjustment then only we can come come to that point of what is cash generated See, what answer you have calculated is cash flow from the entire operating activity but the entire operating activities we have one portion coming from the revenue that is generated, revenue generated from the operations. Then, uh, uh, then we have uh, the tax which has to be deducted, tax paid has to be deducted. Then the final figure is net cash flow from the uh, operating activity. So I think the answer what you have calculated, how much is that? Two lakh thirteen thousand seven eighty. Okay, two lakh thirteen thousand seven eighty eight. Eighty eight. Okay, done. So now, if this is the cash flow from operate, operating activities, 
See, before cash flow from uh, operating activities, we see that um, the revenue, if it is direct method, the revenue minus expenses. This this result this is called as cash generated from operation. Cash that is generated from operation. This these details are not there. We don't have. We only want what is cash generated from operations. So from cash generated from operations, cash generated from operations, I'm just writing short forms, minus tax paid is cash flow from operation, operating activity. So tax paid is also known, 87,566. Take this to this side and add it. 237,888. Plus I got three lakh one thousand three hundred fifty four, and that's also not enough. Three lakh one thousand three hundred fifty four. Okay, you have to add oh, okay, three lakh. Did you miss anything? I'll continue tomorrow on this note. It's time. I want to just wind okay, it up to another okay. thing. See, Thank you. On this note, from, from this point, we'll continue. I think the logic till here, it is clear. Um, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I'll continue tomorrow. And any other specific topic which you want me to do tomorrow? I'll think about it. I don't have any at the moment. Okay. okay. Tomorrow when we join, then. Thank you. I'm in a rush, therefore I'm winding it up. Okay. Good night.